Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail how to test the significance of a correlation coefficient. Uh, and for this particular uh, video, we're going to use a fictitious data set. Okay? Uh, we have the data set is defined over here. Okay? Uh, we have our x variable values down the first column. We have our y variable values down the second column. Uh, and maybe just to give this a name, let's say over a particular period of time uh, for a particular organization or business, uh, we monitored how many sales of a particular product that they achieved uh, on particular days. And let's say we also monitored on them particular days what profit they made. Uh, and I suppose the question that we really have here is, <coughs> is there a relationship between the amount of sales and profit? Or more importantly, is there an association between sales and profit? Or is there a correlation between sales and profit? In this particular instance here, sales are defined, will be defined to be our independent variable. So that's our independent variable. And profit will be our dependent variable. Okay, so what we are hypothesizing is that profit is dependent on sales. Okay, and that's why we've labeled these variables as x uh, for our independent variable and y for our dependent variable. Okay, so I suppose the first part of conducting a significant test of a correlation coefficient is that we need to have the correlation coefficient in the first place. So let's just assume uh, I'm not going to do the calculation. In one of the previous calculations, uh, in one of the previous videos, uh, there is a calculation that shows you how to. There's a video that shows you how to calculate the correlation coefficient uh, between two variables. Uh, and we know that the formula for that is that the correlation coefficient, the sample correlation coefficient, or is equal to n times sigma x y minus sigma x times sigma y divided by uh, n times sigma x squared minus sigma x all to be squared and that needs to be multiplied by n times sigma y squared minus uh, sigma y all to be squared and it's the square root of this particular value here so it's the square root of this value okay and uh, that's divided into the to the numerator so to calculate this particular correlation coefficient we need to calculate the 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 sum of the xy column we create an xy column in our table the x values times the y values we need to calculate the sum of the x column the sum of the y column we need to create x squared values we need to create y squared values and we need to calculate their respective sums now I've done this particular calculation uh, uh, previously and what I know is that from this particular data set that the correlation that the sample correlation coefficient uh, comes out to be approximately uh, 0 0.94 so it's approximately 0 0.94 <clears throat> What's important to know here is that this particular piece of evidence, uh, this sample data has been drawn from a particular population and that population would also have a real correlation coefficient associated with it. So the OR value that we've calculated here, the, the correlation coefficient, the correlation coefficient, uh, this OR value is actually the sample correlation coefficient okay so let's keep that in mind okay this is the correlation between our sample data our sample independent variable and our dependent variable now there is a true correlation coefficient and uh, known as rho okay if i this is i suppose rho okay uh, which is the correlation coefficient the correlation coefficient for the population okay so the correlation coefficient for the population and what we'd like to what we'd like to try to test is <coughs> we'd like to try to test that based on the evidence that we've captured and the sample correlation coefficient that we've calculated uh, is there evidence to support uh, that this particular correlation coefficient is representative of the population that it has been drawn from and to do that we undertake a significance test of the I suppose uh, with respect to the significance of the correlation coefficient uh, that we've observed like all significance tests uh, or like all hypothesis tests it's a five-step process uh, the first step we define our hypothesis the hypothesis is a statement about the population parameter so the hypothesis is a statement about the value that we think that the correlation coefficient of the population uh, has uh, so it has a null position h0 and it has an alternative position ha 
and it's a statement about the population uh, parameter. The null position is typically, uh, in this case, where we're taking the standard, we're doing a standard test. Uh, the null position is that the population coefficient rho is actually equal to zero. Okay. Uh, and the alternative position is that rho, the population correlation coefficient, is is not equal to zero. So once again, this is a two-tailed, a two-tailed test. Okay. So this is a two-tailed test. So for us to show that the null hypothesis is actually incorrect, okay, what we will do is we generate a sample from our population. We calculate the sample characteristics, the sample correlation coefficient. And the question that we have is, is this particular correlation coefficient uh, far enough away from zero uh, for it to be significant, uh, for it to be uh, statistically significant? Okay. So once we've defined our hypothesis, the next step is to define the significance of our test, our significance. And for all of our tests, uh, we've just chosen a significance value of alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Okay. Uh, just keep in mind it's a two-tail test. Okay. So this alpha is going to be split across uh, two tails, the left tail and the right tail. Okay. So once we have our significance uh, chosen, the next step is to construct our test statistic. And our test statistic uh, is defined to be, I suppose it's a T statistic, and it's T is equal to R minus rho divided by 1 minus R squared over N minus 2, and it's the square root of that value there. Okay. An alternative form of it would be uh, T is equal to R times the square root of N minus 2, all over the square root of 1 minus r squared. This formula here is the general form. This formula here is a specific form where we assume that the null hypothesis is a statement uh, and the statement of the null hypothesis is that the